Hi, welcome to this edition of the Santa Barbara Forum. I am tonight's guest host, Eric Durack, and tonight we are doing a show that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I've been in the fitness industry a long time, and I think this is one of the most unique programs in the industry, and very unique for Santa Barbara. So I want to introduce everyone to um, uh, Brianna Pettit, and Brianna is the Chairman, CEO, President of Blind Fitness of Santa Barbara. And we also have one of her um, clients, athletes, athletes, clients, clients mm -hmm. um, colleagues, Bob Burnham. Bob is is has been involved with the program for many years. So welcome to you both to the show. Thank you. And uh, Brianna, I want to start off with how did you get started in such a unique element of the fitness industry? Because as you know, I mean, we've spoken before, I've been involved with special population groups, cancer, diabetes, renal disease, you know, Guillain-Barre syndrome for decades. And I never even heard of blind fitness until I met you. Yeah, I know, it, it's a kind of a little niche, um, but my background is in orientation mobility, and so that is where I teach people with vision loss how to navigate and get around and, uh, Kind of you know navigating their environments um so i mesh that world with my love of sports and the outdoors um and just made sense to me and being in santa barbara with our beautiful playground here and mm -hmm. so much to do um i just yeah i knew that there was going to be a, a big need for that here and um the royal institute in santa barbara uh, is a big community as well and so um, I, I worked there for a bit and was able to see that there was... And you, you integrated love of sports, mm -hmm. aspects of fitness, along with the what I'll call classic training in the Braille Institute, because mm -hmm. you were dealing with uh, people with vision issues on a number of different levels, but you were dealing with them on sort of the rehab side right. or, or, the, the ada or the activities for daily living side. Exactly. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. How do they get along? So how did you meet Bob? Um, maybe at the Braille Institute. I'm trying yes. to remember wh how I, far I, back that I goes. I came in once to donate some white canes that I didn't need anymore, and I thought Brianna could use them. Mm -hmm. So I met her there, and that was when we f got first acquainted. Yeah. And then I'm trying to remember how we hooked up with what she's going to tell you about this uh, beach walk that we do once a month. I'm trying to remember how we connected there, but it's been really fun for the past several months going on the beach walk from the bathhouse, East Beach, okay. down to wh however long we want to walk. Do you guys go past the wharf and then <coughs> up the hill? <laughs> yeah, so um, we start out at the Cabrillo Beach bathhouse and then we head uh, towards the pier. And some of us walk, some run, some stay on the uh, bike path, mm -hmm. others go on the sand. Um, and yeah, Bob joined us for a couple of those now. And Bob has also gone out. Uh, we attempted to boogie board. There weren't much waves that day at Ledbetter Beach. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up more swimming Actually, in the ocean. Yeah, she took me body surfing for the yep. first time in years. Oh, good. That was, was very, the first very time fun. in the ocean in years, you said. Very yeah. fun. Very yeah. Fun. That's a that body surfing thing. So, so the next question, Bob, is tell me a little bit about your uh, stage of blindness and and how you how from from sort of a physical activity standpoint have you sort of through your uh, we're going to get into your music and this stuff a little bit later but but just from a physical activity standpoint how do you get through the day and all those kind of things i was born totally blind with congenital glaucoma very rare type mm -hmm. but i was raised in a wonderful family with three older siblings and parents who uh, decided that i was normal and so they raised me as a normal child, and that was, I was very, very lucky uh, and very blessed in that regard. I, uh, so I got to play uh, through elementary school. I was able to go to regular public schools. Mm -hmm. 
they had the visually handicapped program in those schools. So I was able to learn Braille and lear I learned how to type in third grade. Wow, uh, good for you. And then I got to, you know, I love to play kickball, softball all through uh, my school years, college even. I went to Westmont College. Okay. And um, so I've always enjoyed um, being active. Uh, now I go to Gold's Gym. I'm a, a longtime member. In fact, I just renewed a three-year membership. Wow. I go three days a week. Uh, get there early. That way, I have the machines all to myself. I'm Good for you. Very selfish. When you say early, <laughs> five o'clock. Five a.m. Yes, sir. Five a.m. Yes. And so I enjoy that. I love taking neighborhood walks. Oh um, yeah, Bob knows the streets here like more than anyone because he worked at MTD yes, for a long time. Long time, thirty, almost thirty-two years. Good for you. Good Different for you. jobs. So, so y you 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 hike, you walk. You go to Gold's Gym, which is fantastic. So you have, for the most part, a fitness program dialed in. Pretty much, it could always be tweaked and improved. In uh -huh. fact, I, with my three-year membership, I was able to also buy into four training sessions. I'm going to see my trainer this Wednesday uh, for the first of four training sessions to help Excellent. tweak my program, maybe add some machines, maybe. I'm not trying to buff up, I just, <laughs> Um, I'm weak in my upper body. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to maintain good muscle tone. As we get older, that's the thing. So, so you actually mentioned body surfing and whatever. Mm -hmm. Your fitness um, program is not take him to the gym, have him do three sets. Yours mm -hmm. is walking and turkey trots and, and surfing and, and going to the walking on the sand and doing what I would consider to be out of the ordinary program for anyone. Well, so explain. Yeah, I, I'm open to all of that. Actually, I have an idea of partnering with a local gym. Maybe uh, Gold's would want to be that gym mm -hmm. um, to have more accessible classes for people with vision loss. And mm -hmm. really all that takes is having an instructor who understands the nature of uh, people with vision loss and kind of what they need, whether mm -hmm. it's a little more a description or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most of our programs at the moment are really more designed to get people outdoors and um, connect with others. I think, and Bob, you can talk to this if you want, but um, being blind can often be pretty isolating. And so I want to create more opportunity for people to come together right. as well as exercise and engage in the outdoors, which um, can off also be something that I found um, a lot of people with vision loss will, uh, because of either not having access to the outdoors, maybe they don't have transportation, or maybe they don't have the training, they're limited in their ability to get out there and um, experience nature. And so I want there to be more opportunities to be outside as much as possible. And mm -hmm. what I like about the beach walk mm -hmm. is just the, the, the camaraderie, just yep. getting together with other people, not just other blind people, but the guides who are with us. There's such good interaction. Mm -hmm. and it's a it's a social uh, thrust as well as a, a good physical activity mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I'm also designing the programs so that let's say there already is a surf program in town or a horseback program in town or a running club like Santa Barbara Running Association is right. an example we come in we train some people to be guides um, and there there's the program so right. it's um, been a great way to partner with local uh, nonprofits and other organizations. Excellent. So, so the the members of the Santa Barbara Running Association become the guides, right? And thanks to them, yeah, they just mm -hmm. had us all um, invited to participate in Santa Barbara Half Marathon this past weekend. Mm -hmm. We had a couple people running the half marathon, a bunch doing the 5K, and we're going to be partnering with them this uh, year to train a bunch of their. Um, runners to be guides. Right, so the first shameless promotion for you is going to be that you're doing some event at the, the annual turkey trot event right. on Thanksgiving. So yep. tell us about that right now. Yeah, so Thanksgiving Day there's a four mile run. Um, I think it's at the Magnolia Shopping Center. Yes. And um, I have yet to do it, so this will be fun to check out. And we'll have uh, a couple, maybe a handful of our athletes there that day to run with some guides and um, just continue to put the word out there. and and uh, yeah, show people 
what we're all about in Santa Barbara. Um, it's, we're just growing. We just started a year ago. So. Right, and if they want information, they can get it through the local newspapers because they, they promote the turkey trot for weeks. Right, so yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you the only person in the United States that does this kind of program? There actually, now that I've been in this world for the last year, it's been amazing to see that there are a lot of other organizations and individuals um, promoting a similar mission, which is to help people with vision loss um, engage in sports and recreation. Uh, there, I just spoke to a woman recently in San Luis Obispo. Mm -hmm. um, they have something called the Go See Foundation there. Um, there is USABA, United States Association of Blind Athletes. Um, Bob, maybe you know a little more about that program, but they've been around a while. There's also a bunch um, that are more particular in one area of a sport, like Blind Stokers Club is all about tandem cycling. What'd you say, Blind Smokers Club? Stokers. Stokers <laughs> Club. Uh, they're in San Diego. <laughs> They've got um, BORP in the Bay Area, uh, Bay Area Outreach Program. So there's quite a few um, nonprofits out there, and I'm hoping that we can all collaborate and um, try to, you know, pool resources and put together more programs and events throughout mm -hmm. California. So. Well, yeah. I would imagine that it, uh, back in the day when um, CrossFit started, it was very small, and mm -hmm. then they got somebody to sponsor, and then it became really big. Yeah, that's so, what we need, a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, well, we, again, that's something we'll, we'll talk about that <laughs> down the road here, because like I say, someone maybe like a CrossFit would, totally. would be, uh, it's a pretty big company. Yeah. Um, so, Bob, are you in, outside of uh, the, the body surfing and, and the walks that you do and the training that you do at Gold's Gym, you're training for maybe the turkey trot or, or another type of event like that, but are you, do you consider yourself to be a blind athlete? Um, very uh, minimal at this point. Okay. I'd love to develop more. Um, I'm fairly ambulatory. In fact, when I was walking with Brianna on our last beach walk, uh, she caught me speed walking. And uh, to, yeah, you were the first one to finish that race, if we call it a race. <laughs> <laughs> was it on the sand or I on just, the sidewalk? It was on the sidewalk, okay. but I, I like to walk fast. Yes, you and do. It's just invigorating, especially on a cool, brisk day. Santa Barbara just has the most wonderful weather yeah, yeah. to be outdoors and do totally. that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'd like to develop more as, as a... An athlete, just as an athlete, uh, not necessarily uh, a, a blind athlete mm -hmm. per se, but just uh, to be out. And I love bike riding. I had a tandem bike that I wasn't using, so it kind of went feral or fallow. So I had to. We ended up selling it. But mm -hmm. I love bike riding, um, kayaking. Love to do yes, more kayaking. Yes, I love that too. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to skiing in, in South Dakota in January. There you go. I hadn't downhill skied in 40 years. Nice. And what they do is they hook up uh, the blind person with a helmet. You may have seen 60 Minutes with a blind Olympic skier, and his father would give him directions through a headphone in a helmet, mm -hmm. and told him when to turn left and right going down mm -hmm. the down the slope. So that's kind of what they're doing uh, with this ski program in, in Deadwood. Yeah, Excellent. they do a similar thing in the blind surf community as well. I've seen some people uh -huh. out there with helmets. <laughs> shark, shark on the <laughs> left. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's one of my snarky jokes, Bob. Anyway. Um, so, I, and I have a question about the cycling, since I don't necessarily know that you're cycling on Cabrillo Boulevard, but do you, in terms of your training at Gold's Gym, are you, are you a stationary cycle guy or a... a yeah, I start on the recumbent bike for about 10 minutes just to warm up, and then I go and go to something called the arc trainer, which is kind of move your arms and legs mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. back and mm -hmm. forth. Now, I really like it. I like it better than the elliptical machine, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I spend time on that and then go through all my all my stationary, mostly upper body weights, and the abs crunch, and the mm -hmm. lower back. Then I end up on the, on the treadmill. So it's a really fun, nice. fun program in terms of trying to do 
core exercises, I fear that my trainer will want to get me more into the leg presses <laughs> and, the, and the leg machines, which I haven't gotten used to yet, but may, maybe I will. <laughs> well, I think, I think that as we all get older, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, I've never been crazy about squatting and I don't squat anymore because of my back, mm -hmm. but I still like to do heavy leg press and leg, because I know it's good for the hip joint, the, yes. the, you know, the, yes. the bone density. So right. that, that's a big deal. Good point. Um, so anyway, so I like the, f the, the fact uh, that you're doing the, um, the, the, you know, all of those types of machines at Gold's because, um, gosh, you know, there's, they've got such great equipment now as they opposed do. to 20, 30 years ago. You and know? most of it's pretty accessible. Even on the treadmill, someone showed me how to go to the bottom right of the touch screen. Now, these are all touch screens. You have to see where to... Mm -hmm. where, to, where to punch the little uh, yeah, yeah. buttons. Well, if I angle up from the bottom right corner and just kind of tap around, it gets it going. I think it's a, the, the quick start button. Right, and right. And then you've got the little spring-loaded buttons on the front that you can increase the speed and the incline. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so it, they're actually quite accessible. That's great. And yeah, then, once you learn how to, yeah, mm -hmm. once you learn where everything is, it's yeah. like they're never going to change. And, and then all right. the stationary machines, <coughs> I don't count, I don't keep track of how much weight I'm pressing, I just count the holes. Because I don't need, so some of the weights vary from machine to machine. Right. So I just count, okay, this uh, machine's three holes down, this one's four holes, you know, gosh. whatever. I'm so, going to have to go with you some of these, one of these <laughs> yeah. days to the gym. Just yeah. to see. And which, which, uh, which Gold's gym do you use? Of West Carrillo, downtown. Downtown, okay. I, yeah. I walk there at 4.30 in the morning. It's a beautiful early morning walk, about seven blocks from my house. 4.30. <laughs> That's so early. That's pretty early. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, so y before we got on air, we were sort of talking about your sort of lack of high tech. Uh, you don't use any special noise devices or beeping devices, uh, any of that kind of stuff when you're walking with people. Because one of the things that I wanted to ask about you when you said you were, quote, speed walking is the... the um, the bike path, yeah, close to the east, close to the East Beach bathhouse, is mm -hmm. is pretty pretty smooth. But correct, you know, you would know best. Are there cracks? Are there things? You know what I mean? It's interesting you bring that up. When I used to take the downtown shuttle to the wharf and walk from the wharf to Milpas and back, mm -hmm. I'd use the bike path. But I would try to hug to the right edge because it's very crowded with skate skateboarders and bicyclists Absolutely. and walkers. Um, I find that the walk on the you know, actual sidewalk on Cabrillo is a little more uh, pedestrian friendly okay. yep. in terms of walking. Mm -hmm. That's now, Brianna can to. tell you all about white cane technique mm -hmm. because if I have my hand right out sort of in the midpoint of my body and, and using a fairly symmetrical arc from right to left, then I'm pretty safe even at a fast walking speed. Right. Yeah, so, so that's part Bri of Brianna can talk more about that. What I teach orientation yeah. mobility training is a lot of that is teaching the white cane, white cane. for people. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're using the cane, you want to make sure it's a little past each shoulder when you sweep the cane about an inch past your shoulder, so it's right. protecting the widest point of your body. Um, there are different techniques, whether you're tapping it or sliding it to get more feedback. Um, but out on the the walkway there, a lot of people will just trail along the uh, grass line. So they can kind of know they're staying right. on path. Um, hearing the sound of the traffic on the street can kind of help you stay aligned. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, the more you do it, the more you have that m mental map. Right. right. Well, and I'm sure that your body is pretty aware of. I mean, uh, getting closer to the bathhouse, etc. You could smell oh, yeah. the food, or you can right. listen listen to something that's like the hotel on the other side, or a certain thing about the beach, or whatever. I can, that I can hear some of that. The problem with speed walking is I have to be uh, hyper aware of people around me so I don't knock somebody over right. <laughs> walking too fast. <laughs> what are and you, not, every, not everyone no. recognizes no. a white cane but, and, as right. being someone with vision loss. Right. And you know? if you're on a bicycle on the bike path and he's in front of right. you, you might not see it anyway. Right. You know? right. So yeah, and I, I get it. And this is that's why this is such yeah. a very interesting topic for me because I'm interested in the fit and I'm listening to to, to Bob and he's like, he's a champ. You know, oh, he's, totally. he's got this fitness routine, his weight training routine. 
yeah. I would, I, again, I don't know because I don't know this, this, this group. So, yeah. um, okay, so you don't use high tech, well, but yeah, tell me about some of the other things that you, that there's you are. There's some adaptive equipment that we use. Um, when we run, there are certain tethers that some people will use, and right. these tethers don't get very technical. Like I've used a bandana, a bungee cord. Um, we've uh, this organization, Stunt Puppy, which makes things for dogs. They put together this little kind of wait. Leash. She put you on a leash? Oh my god! <laughs> Not yet. Bob hasn't tried what that. What a trainer one yet. is she? But it <laughs> basically goes around your two fingers yeah, and yeah, the guides. Yeah. Right. And it's about you know a foot long. Um, so tethers. Uh, the cane is one, right. but other than that, yeah, you don't really need uh, much else. I, I need to put a word in for my dear wife, Patty. Yeah. She's on her fifth guide dog, and uh, she's a really good dog handler, and she can walk faster than I can yep. with her guide dog, and he's an excellent, he can guide her around people totally. and objects, just incredible. Hmm. Yep. Um, you can run with guide dogs too. Yes. Certain ones yeah. have even been trained from mm -hmm. running dog. There's a guide dog school specifically for running. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Excellent. Uh, so much to learn about this. Um, do you use any type of fitness equipment like fitness balls or um, like you said, mm. bungee cords or rubber tubing or something that like if you have a little class out by the beach or something or stretching things yeah. for people? In theory, maybe I'd do something like that. Um, we haven't done, we well, haven't I, I, done. I don't mean like in theory, like maybe someday we'll do this, but <laughs> we, you do it now. I we're currently not doing that. Okay. The only real class uh, environment that I've had recently would be yoga. Ad and Santa Barbara Yoga Center has um, mm -hmm. put together an adaptive yoga class, but that was more for people with um, mobility impairments. Okay. So a lot of that has been in a chair, um, but I did teach an adaptive yoga class at the Braille Institute, and um, it's just a matter of, yeah, bringing that back to this community if that's what they want, and that's what mm -hmm. I've been really trying to do is um, focus on what the needs are and make that happen, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, we've had a couple conversations when we first met last year or so, and um, before we went on air, we talked a little bit about this whole thing about certifying trainers, because in the past decade, you know, we've gone from the standard cardiac rehab and cancer training and weight loss and, and diabetes care and hypertension, all these types of things, to autism training and mm -hmm. muscular dystrophy training and multiple sclerosis training, like almost every type of medical condition right now has a type of fitness mm -hmm. um, certification or CEU program. So my, my question to you mm -hmm. is, is, is uh, you know, have you thought about it? Is this something that you could collaborate with someone that you could actually have continuing education? Because I think that trainers would and I'm going to ask a question of Bob here in just a second, but I think trainers would be real interested in in working with this group. I mean, judging based on what you do, it's amazing. Yeah, he, you can't even keep up with this guy. No, I know. You know, it's true, and I I definitely think that would be a great thing to have. Um, you know, gyms and maybe these certifying bodies that right. are certifying mm -hmm. the fitness trainers to um, consult with people that work with different populations. Yeah. And yeah, the blind population is one of them, so. Yeah. And so this brings me to my question to you, sir. Um, I'm gonna just throw out some, some questions, like I'm gonna do a little rapid fire here. How many blind people are in the United States? Well, I hear less than 1%, but I have no idea. Oh, guess what? An estimated 1.1 million Americans are legally blind. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Um, okay. That comes from NFB. NFB. Oh, yeah, National good. Federation for the Thanks, Blind. Thanks, Rihanna, for Some, bringing me up. And there. then most of them mm -hmm. are from ge degenerative diseases like glaucoma, um, cataracts, diabetes. Yep. Okay. So and, and so, what is the average age? I mean, this is, now you were from birth. Correct. But, but is it something where is there a particular age like elder elderly people who don't have who don't right. get eye surgery? Do they? go legally blind. I mean, my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. before she passed away, had oh God, three or four eye surgeries. Oh, yeah. yeah. So That's a big one. My mom went blind from glaucoma before she died. Okay. Yeah, but glaucoma, so macular hydration, those are big ones. The people born blind are probably, what did you say, Brianna, less than 15%? Uh, people like that, that have zero vision is what I had, uh, 15%. They yeah, 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 have no light, no, no form light, like no, Bob. Okay. No perception, yeah. Very yeah. small percentage of the totally, of the 
blind, the blind, blind population. population. Right. Right. It's very yeah rare. Any other great yeah. statistics in there you want to? Um, well, you're, you're taking all of Bob's thunder, but that's all right. <laughs> I had to look that stuff up because I was curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, in California, the number of blind, uh, rep, it, it, this is a 2016 study, but just around 800,000 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. That's like, there's only 40 million people in California. That's like right? one out of every 45 people, which is so, in Santa Barbara, that would be 1,000 people. Yeah, exactly. 1,200 people. Something. I think that's kind of the number I was thinking. So wow. a lot of, I think, the population here, I would, I think, are more, in, I, I would think, in senior, elderly age. But right. yeah, um, but the I did want to mention, just so to clarify, what it means to be legally blind, because um, there's all different phases of vision loss and blindness, and right. so if someone's legally blind, that would mean that they have, um, you know, normal vision is 2020, but if you're legally blind. 2200 or worse mm -hmm. um, or you could also be considered legally blind if you have a visual um, field loss of 20 degrees or less okay so which is scary though because they don't really check your your field loss when you go to get your driver's test if you can read if your central vision is good enough and you can read the uh, eye chart, right. you're good to go, even if you're legally blind. Right, and I actually <laughs> spent a little bit of time when I worked at the university being a safe driving instructor, and I will tell you that most oh, people wow. don't have very good peripheral mm. sense anyway, even if yeah. they don't have any problems with their eyes, they don't like turn their head, yeah, they, you they don't do those kind of things. Anyway, all right, that's another thing. So, yeah. all right, so you don't certify, but this is something that I think might be a growing element of the special population mm -hmm. fitness education stuff. So. Um, so tell me a little bit about your business. Yeah, so we started a year ago and it started out with um, this orientation and mobility training, which mm -hmm. is a big need for this community. Um, and then it's, we've now incorporated these monthly beach walk and runs. Okay. Um, again, we have one this Saturday if anyone wants to join us on at the 12th East Beach at 9.30. 9.30. Um, we're well, always looking for volunteers as well for that. Not 4.30, because um, you want to no. make sure he's not waiting for a few <laughs> exactly. hours. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> a, another cool thing, we got connected with the USA Adaptive Parasurf team last year. Okay. Um, and so we are involved with these parasurfers that will be competing for gold in the Paralympics, we hope, in 2028. will be the first time um, that surfing, if it gets adopted, will be... Uh, in that Paralympics, so because surfing in the Olympics just became a thing. Okay. So apparently right. well, this whatever. is all I, new. Uh, but, but anyway, so but we, in terms of blind, uh, tell me a little bit, and Bob, you can jump in too. But tell me a little bit about uh, like an Olympic sports. Mm -hmm. uh, there are blind track and field runners. Yep. I know because I've seen some of them train. Yep. Uh, there are black uh, blind. Um, um, they have all kinds of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, hockey. so okay. So hockey. So give me some sports that that might be like in skiing. the Olympic. skiing. Yep. Well, that's what he's. That's his thing. So. Yeah. What are some other ones? Bike, are you going maybe to maybe bike racing? I I wouldn't uh -huh. mind. Oh, like triathlon. velodrome, triathlon, a, a, like a, a velodrome. I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind being in a tandem bike race. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Uh huh. Yeah. Are you familiar with um, indoor velodrome bicycling? I've you go heard about it. I don't know much about it. Uh, that would be so, that, that would be a fun thing wow. to do. Mm -hmm. So, like a tandem th yeah. anyway. Yeah. But I, I, I would li I would like to be involved maybe in a kayak race mm -hmm. or a canoe canoe race. Um, mm -hmm. I love I love water sports. I I would love to learn how to jet ski. Oh, fun. Oh my God! Wow, <laughs> you know you're gonna have to get some fundraising fun stuff. stuff right? I know, yeah, yeah. totally. So yeah, um, the other program we have, the adaptive yoga program, is growing right now. That we just partnered with um, Santa Barbara Yoga Center, and we're hoping to build more of a platform for specifically people with vision loss. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those are the four. Okay. So and then we're hoping to partner with these other organizations, like I mentioned. Um, Possibly a gym or um, another nonprofit that's offering, uh, like horseback riding in town. Hearts Therapeutic is one we've talked to about. Right, they used to be right off Turnpike. Yep, if they're I still know. there. They're still there. Yeah, okay. as far as mm -hmm. I know. Um, and doing a surf clinic this year is one of the things I want to put on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to reach out to some local surf companies and see if we can put something like that together. Um, yeah, there's a guy. He used to be. A, he used to have a surf camp here for 40 years, and of course, 
oh, I can't remember his name. Well, I, I, I wrote it down, so we'll, we'll talk okay. a little bit about that. Yeah, now, no, you, don't, you don't have, per se, co-workers. You don't have a staff, but nope. you have people who help volunteer for right. you or, like you said, some, some of the runners from the Santa Barbara uh, Running Association or uh, Athletic Association We're will help to, do that. to be guides. That's going to be our new mm -hmm. thing we're doing in the new year because okay. they just partnered with us for this last um, Santa Barbara Half Marathon, but we have yet to train any of their runners, so that's okay. going to happen. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I want to be able to offer more programming, but right now because we're so new and there's no funding, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to build that so that um, it's not just me doing it as well. I need to have a staff. I, I want to have more people. Right. Well, so how much how much of your time do you spend writing grants and? That's going to be the next stage. I yeah. haven't even been able to start the grants because I'm out giving the programs, organizing all the behind the scenes stuff. Right. doing the orientation mobility training. I was mm -hmm. in Santa Maria today um, for a two-hour lesson at Allen Hancock College. Remember, this guy knows how to type, so he oh, yeah. put him to work. I wish um, I knew how to write grants. I, yeah. I should have taken a course back in the day. Yeah. Well, that, that, they're, they're not that. I actually just submitted a grant a uh, couple weeks ago for uh, this uh, spinal cord company that I'm doing work with oh, down nice. south. And I, I, I used to work in a nonprofit, so I, I don't say I can whip them up, but it's yeah. you understand there's a there's a there's a process to all right. Yeah. So anyway, but but so you're you're trying to to, to really reach out to elements of the community. So mm -hmm. one of the questions that I have here is how much buy-in do you get from the medical community? And it doesn't have to be doctors, but are mm -hmm. there nurses or PTs or OTs or so that said you yeah, know, what you're doing is pretty cool. Well, honestly, I haven't even really gone to Cottage <clears throat> or Samson to approach them about any of this, mm -hmm. but I think that it would be a great idea. Um, even like the outreach. Diabetes uh, Research Center, doing some mm -hmm. outreach. I mean, Cottage Rehabilitation did just do this adaptive yoga thing, so. Right, well, I, yeah. I'm thinking because when I worked at Samson Research, I spoke at their grand rounds noon lecture mm. probably six or seven times. Oh wow! So you know you have to talk with somebody in the education department to get on the docket, but I think it'd be a fun, yeah, be a fun thing a great to idea. do. So yeah, that way you're good because, like I say, if the doctors understand this, and I don't know mm -hmm. that there are that many doctors in town. Most of them are probably in with the Braille Institute or some some affiliation. Mm. But I would imagine that there would be uh, now. Do, do you go to a regular, uh, regular doctor checkups? And, yes, and I just had my uh, one-year uh, wellness visit with my primary care physician this last Monday. Okay, nice. and what is he's yeah. he's on? <laughs> he's on it. I, no wonder you got him for because he's like, I got my thing. I go to the he's gym. He's very and, organized. So anyway, so <laughs> in your doctor's like, oh, I love what you're doing, right? Um, not so much. No, um, she just is concerned about my. A1C, and um, which is your glycosylated hemoglobin. Yeah, right. But and as active as you are, it should be <clears throat> not too bad. It's it's higher than it should be. Okay. And that's I'm trying to not very well, but trying to uh, curb it with uh, diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. you know, more healthy foods, vegetables. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. uh, don't eat much red meat at all anymore. Mostly chicken and fish, mm -hmm. vegetables, fruits. I drink water. Most of the time, maybe a cup of coffee or tea in the morning. Mm -hmm. I use monk fruit as my sweetener. Yay, monk fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, just trying to do, you know, be healthy through natural means and not succumb to the drugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 and I did a lot of work with exercise for diabetics when I first moved here and really got familiar with how to sort of manipulate the, the whole thing to get that A1C down. And it's not mm -hmm. as difficult as what people would think. And your exercise regime sounds pretty pretty sterling, you know what I mean? Yeah, it I'm, seems pretty good. So pretty a little bit of results. manipulation in, <laughs> you know, uh, with, with some of the diet, like you say, a little bit more higher protein or whatever, and I think you, you will do fine. Not that I even know what your number is, but you have to say. <laughs> but it's interesting that, like I say, I think that doctors are just they're just doing their own thing, and, yeah. and, 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 and they just need to have a little bit of the awareness, and I think that's where some of the local community yeah. things help out. Because I started the cancer program at the athletic club. The first group we went to was the Cancer Foundation. 
Right. They were, they were, oh yeah, this is pretty good. But it was only after the word of mouth started to go was that, you know, they had yeah. for years and years that program was going. But they had a place to go and I think, that, you know. Yeah, so. I think that's a good idea to start um, reaching out to these eye doctors in town because, yeah. you Ophthalmologist know. Ophthalmologists. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. And I one just did reach out to me from Ventura um, because of a client of ours going there and talking about what we're doing. So, exactly. you know, especially for those people who are losing their vision later in life, uh, to give them a community and mm -hmm. realize, you know, people are out there run, running, surfing, biking, skiing. You Doing know. things I would never even <laughs> think. I mean, like I say, I didn't, I didn't per se think about it, but as I'm listening to what Bob's doing. So now I, so I'm going to question for sort of both of you. Mm -hmm. So from this whole person to person and person to group, um, what is the reward to you? To be able to do this because clearly you're not making tons of money yet mm -hmm. but but you still have this passion to do that and so how you know how much is that the driver for you oh that's a huge driver that's why i'm doing this um because it's for me i love being outside being in nature exercising and connecting mm -hmm. with others so when i saw that there is a need for that with this community um i just yeah it just feels so good for people to um be so grateful to have this outlet. Mm -hmm. And I hear that all the time from the people that I work with. They're just so happy, grateful to be able to do these things. Um, and they want more of it, and I'm trying my best okay. to get more. So, so. two-part question to you. How did you find out about it, and how important is this for you in terms of your rewarding aspect? Well, just being in touch with Brianna and connecting with this group. How did you find um, out about it? Um, how did... Probably just word of mouth. Yeah, I think word of mouth. I um, someone maybe Skyler or somebody from Braille Institute told me about mm -hmm. the beach walk, mm -hmm. and uh, so I I've had Brianna's contact information for a while, and yeah. uh, mostly because I'm like the orientation mobility <coughs> instructor right. in Santa Barbara. There's like maybe one or right. two of us here, so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, but I just wanted to connect, and it's not just with other blind people. It's all the volunteers we mm -hmm. we bring in to join us right. and to educate them. A lot of a lot of uh, this involves raising awareness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of the uh, educational aspect of yes. helping people understand um, what a lot of sighted people don't know. The first thing, how can I help you as a blind person? And they, there are a lot of mm -hmm. assumptions, a lot of stereotypes, a lot of mis, uh, a lot of preconceived mm -hmm. notions. Well, I would fall yeah. into, I would fall a lot of fear and not mm -hmm. knowing yeah. how do I, what do I say, <laughs> what do I don't say, what do I do, yeah. and just not knowing. And so, yeah, I love that you're bringing that up, Bob, because that was a big part of our um, White Cane Awareness Day, which yes. is a national day of recognition. We right. celebrated on uh, October 15th. Mm -hmm. just passed and that whole day was all around raising awareness of the blind community and we blindfolded our sighted guides and had them out um, there walking along Cabrillo and all of our uh, blind participants were guiding them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it yes. was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the local celebrity folks who is here in the studio quite often is John Paul Monteri. Oh yeah. You gotta have John, Love John do something like that. Have you met him? Love John, yes, a couple yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, let's blindfold John. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> say. If you could get him to do something like that. You, you listen to me, John Paul Monteri, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make that happen. Totally. So, and we'll put this on Facebook and we'll, Perfect. we'll, put we'll him, tag him. We'll tag him on it. So he's like, John, no, no. That would have been great. No, I think he'd love that because I saw him, I was downtown a um, couple weeks ago with a, f a friend of mine and he was doing a report right on State Street. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, kind of, it's like the piano things that they have on State Street. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The new, and the new noise, yeah. The new, oh, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of music, um, uh, we found out something before we went on air that not only you're like this, this you know, big fitness gold gym guy, but you are also a musician. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I've been I've been singing and playing guitar since well, I got a guitar when I was twelve. Um, started learning classical piano, but it didn't do much for me because a, a neighbor two doors down the street played the meanest Scott Joplin ragtime piano I ever heard, and I said, "Mom, I want to play like that," and she wouldn't hear of it. So I 
struggled with classical piano for a couple of years, and then my brother gave me a guitar. I started learning Kingston Trio music and oh, had yeah. folk groups in high school and <coughs> had a folk group in college. We went on a mission team to South Africa for seven weeks in the summer of 72. See, so isn't he awesome? This guy does fun, <laughs> fun stuff. But now um, my, my main thrust is I'm a music minister at my church at St. Raphael's. My wife and I are there at the 9 o'clock Mass every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that all for 53 years. Wow. And that's, you know, I, could, I may have been able to go professional as a professional musician, but I didn't like the lifestyle, the drinking, the the mm. the women pickups, the, the all that know, cocaine, the drugs, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the drug. I did not. <laughs> well, I who could would you not, have been? <laughs> uh, I, I I would have died a long time ago if I had gone yeah. into that lifestyle. Well, you know what, Robin Williams. So I took the safe yeah. route. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, well, and I've we're been totally blessed. We're hoping that we can utilize yeah. that skill of yours in that community to put together a fundraiser event. Fun we want yes. to do a um, blind fitness uh, music a, a concert. benefit concert oh, that would that's be, coming that here. Would be awesome. So Bob's going to yeah, be helping yeah. me put that. Well, together. Well, you could do is sort of a, like uh, you said you played at uh, Soho. Yep. Yes. Oh, I got to tell you about Soho. Um, the women and the friend drugs. of ours. <laughs> no, listen Alcohol. to this. In the small room at Soho, the left side. Yeah, yeah. With the bar. Yeah. Is a wonderful small venue. Every last Sunday of the month, on the thirtieth or the thirty, whatever, the last Sunday of the month, there's a wonderful woman named Sandy Cummings, who runs a thing called Jazz Du Jour. It's twelve thirty to three thirty. Brianna's been with us a couple times. Mm -hmm. Super fun. She hires a wonderful trio: piano, bass, and drums. They're excellent musicians. She sings the first hour of jazz, old jazz standards, and then they take a break, and then she invites people from the audience to come up and sit in with the trio and sing sing a song. So it is the most fun venue we've been we've done in years, and um, I'm learning old jazz standards I never would have learned before. Yeah, great I love music, I'm intelligent, great music. No, I'm yeah, not. super fun. Yeah. I love that. All right, so I have a question for you about your. I'm going to come back to uh, the programming mm -hmm. thing that I was second part of a question I didn't get to. Um, the big thing in health and fitness and um, rehabilitation and medicine is outcomes and you know evidence-based this mm. and whatever. What you do is, is not uh, by any stretch of the imagination a classic siloed rehab program. Mm -hmm. You don't do it in a rehab center. Bob lifts weights on his own, but you, mm -hmm. you've even said you don't really count the, you know, you don't know how much weight you're lifting, you just go by the sensation. By, by the holes. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so, so your outcome, how do you define the outcomes of your, pro I mean, you've got healthy, healthy you, happy people. I'll tell you, by the smile on their face. Okay, well, let me write that down. <laughs> Smiley faces. Yeah. My, so my thing for fitness, it's not necessarily this whole, like, you know, um, like you're saying, measuring the outcomes of your, uh, what, your, Blood pressure. What were what would be well? Some one of the big things with with COVID was depression. Right. Everyone yes. was stuck totally. at home. Everyone yeah. was depressed. Yes. And one of the things we're finding out is that that, that in the last four to six to seven eight months, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who are coming back to health clubs are really digging it. As a matter of yeah. fact, I just read today that Peloton bikes, which is oh, what people were using right, at right. home, two years ago they were selling. I mean, they were like the best. Right. Selling yeah. fitness everyone equipment. Those, and yeah. Everyone had a Peloton bike, like $3,000. You could get a car for that. But anyway, right. but it was <laughs> a really good piece of exercise equipment. And people thought, well, I'll just be at home the rest of my life. So, now But they're now they're those. coming back to the clubs. Uh -huh. And people Peloton has had their worst uh, quarter yeah. in the last you know, eight yeah, quarters, no. which is, it's, it's an ebb and flow. But, but right. I, I like the fact that people are getting back to the clubs. Mm -hmm. But yeah. your level of outcomes is, I would say number of people who participate. Right, and smile. keep coming back and right. sharing. So that's a, the smile on the face equates to that they're happy and healthy and that, that well, is a yeah, behavioral every, outcome. Yeah, every time mm -hmm. I have these group outings, I just, I'm constantly being told, this is so great for us to be able to right. come outside, mm -hmm. have people to connect with, have that community. Um, and that's what I want to build more of and right. really get our Santa Barbara community uh, on board with this because I want to be able to infiltrate in all the communities that are already there. Mm -hmm. You know, like come in and bring our uh, blind athletes, join a class here, join a class there, come check out this program and, you know, make it accessible to our, 
our athletes. So um, I think, yeah, I think that for me, that fitness piece is a, a big part of it is the mental health aspect that you're mentioning. Who is the famous Hispanic guitar player, Feliz Navidad? Oh, Jose, Jose Feliciano. Feliciano. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a guy. I saw him in concert a couple times. It's wow. amazing. The way that he plays the guitar is amazing. And I know he's got like different size fingernails for, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he, it, he has this whole, huh. uh, and, and, and do you play with a pick? Do you play with yes. fingers? I play with a pick, okay. uh, but I've learned to incorporate a couple fingers, so it's kind of a, a hybrid uh, finger pick, mostly flat pick. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm more into chords. I, I'm not a lead guitar player like uh, Jimmy Page or, or uh, Eric Clapton, you know, no way. Who, who, I, no. I love those guys, <laughs> Carlos Santana. Yeah, oh, Santana. I, I, I think I've guys. heard of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but um, I, I'm more rhythm because I love to fill, <clears throat> I li like to accompany behind people that can do their thing with lead and, and play other, other instruments. And I, I just play the back the backup to, to fill the, mm -hmm. I, I love filler. I love a wall of sound like the, uh, Brian Wilson could talk to you about that with the Beach Boys. Mm. Just creating that wall of sound with harmony and, and extra voices mm -hmm. and that beautiful sound. Let's hear it. You hear. I, <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> wish I had more than one voice. Uh. Um, so okay, well, we'll have to do something. This is this is what I'm seeing right now is that you know you're looking for fundraising or whatever, and yeah. he's got like <laughs> so many talents with this guy is that is to have something where you have like a regular you know thing that's maybe sponsored by someone that mm. that 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 like the whole the jazz night is this like a sponsor or that that someone mm. could donate mm. or a portion of proceeds or totally. whatever that that could be very helpful i like that idea ongoing something <laughs> that's ongoing that that yeah. is and then then you have you have your friends from the blind community mm. who are all of a sudden sitting oh. in the front row at uh at yeah, uh, so soho well. and it's like uh Totally. <laughs> you know, so great. just so they can enjoy that. That's one thing about music is that, you know, and, and Bob, you don't know this because you've never seen, but the, there are so many. And who's the famous opera singer? Um, uh, the Italian, uh, the uh, Italian guy. Uh, uh, Andre Bocelli. Bocelli, because I actually listen to him because he sings uh, some wonderful songs that I, I like. Yeah. And he's actually sort of on my YouTube playlist. But I listen to people when they sing or when they listen or whatever, and a lot of times they'll close their eyes so they sort of feel the music, which mm -hmm. is what probably you've been doing your whole life. Sometimes, yeah. But, but, but they just, um, one of my favorite jazz musicians used to be a local guy, uh, Doc Severinsen played for the Tonight Show band for 30 years. Oh, wow, yes. And he lived in San Ynez Valley for oh, wow. know, 10 years or so, and I used to see him in Montecito at the Italian restaurant, in Santa Barbara at the Italian restaurant, and Grappolo's up in San Ynez at the Italian restaurant because he loved Italian food. <laughs> but I would, he, I see him so many um, YouTube videos that have been posted on YouTube about his career, and you can just how he just would close his eyes to, to certain, you know, even on the Tonight Show he would he would do that as well too. You remember his song called Ways? Oh, I don't. Okay, now I know the melody. <laughs> right, yes. That's a talent right there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but anyway, but he just, you know, some of these musicians, like guitar players, uh, brass instrument players, or whatever that would do, and they would just close their eyes to, to yeah. Because there's this sensation there with the vibration or whatever that you probably have this innate ability with because you were born with it. I used to have perfect pitch. It's not so perfect anymore because I'm I'm getting older. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> and it's, so when did you when did you start with music twelve right around there? Uh, well, I my mom told me that this note on the piano was middle C when I was like three years old. Oh, okay, so and it starts oh, from there. okay, right. but I got a guitar when I was twelve, and I've played guitar ever since. Okay, all right, yeah, because wow. my mom was a classic piano player too, and there's middle C and <laughs> all whatever. So huh. um, okay, That's so the whole we language I don't speak. But I'd love to know more. <laughs> yeah. the, the language of music. Uh -huh. well, it's, it's interesting because uh, when you when you think about different languages, and we were talking about language before we came on air, and, and just how difficult certain mm -hmm. languages are. But it really is the, you know the music with the harmonies, and like you say, filling this room with music and stuff is yeah. was where you really bring people together. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
I'm going to ask sort of the same questions with Bob, but where do you yeah. see yourself in five years? Hmm. Billion wow. dollar corporation? <laughs> I would love to have chapters because um, you know I'm getting calls, emails constantly about, oh, do, do you serve San Diego? Do you right. serve San Luis Obispo? Um, there's a need for this, so I'd love for there to be chapters. Um, I'd love to partner, like I said, with mm -hmm. other gyms and organizations um, to offer more programs on a consistent basis. Um, I'd like to have a staff <laughs> in five years, not just mm -hmm. me. Um, and who's the most famous blind person in America? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Bob. I, Bob I Burnham, mean, right no, here. No, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you the know, most well-rounded. Right? Well, you could say musically, you could say Stevie Wonder. Okay, Stevie Wonder. Ray yeah. Charles. There was a guy named well, Tom Sullivan. I remember Tom Sullivan. He's really been uh, a, a spokesman for integrating blind people into society just through his acting and singing. Mm -hmm. and, mm. And right, but Ste Stevie movie. Wonder is, is someone who, who would... Uh, yeah. I saw him live once, too. We can get Stevie He's, on board cause, here. Because I, I actually He's have so guest funny. speaker here, and it's something that, that if you could get somebody from L.A. Um, are you a local? Yeah, uh, I grew up in Oxnard. I uh, came here to go to Westmont in 1970. Okay, so so you've been around Santa Barbara. Do you remember Oscar's Jazz Club downtown? I think so. Okay, yeah. so Oscar's was a jazz club at 1129 mm. State Street that I used to go to when I first came here in the 80s. Okay. And Stanley Jordan, the guitar player, and, and Wynton Marsalis wow. on a Wednesday night would nice. be playing jazz because he nice. was at the Hollywood Bowl <laughs> on a Sunday. That's and rare would, for Santa Barbara to get that talent. Yeah. Not back then. Wow. I saw David Benoit, I saw all of these wow. great jazz people at Oscars, and the reason was is that they would drive from Los Angeles mm. to San Francisco, and right. they'd plan it that, like you say, what's he doing here on a Thursday? Oh, because he's Friday night, he's in the Bay yeah. Area, so right. he's got a day to oh, kill, he's just gonna over. hang in Santa Barbara, and he yeah. can yeah. play, it was amazing. Well, awesome. yeah. That, that, so that's, all of those types of things. That's the nice thing about having an organization in Santa Barbara, because it's an easy thing to sell. You want to come to Santa Barbara and do right. this run? It's like, sure, right. I want to come to Santa Barbara. Well, but like I say, if we had someone, and I'll, I will use a, a Stevie Wonder as, as an example, that would have a program that you would plan, and mm. then he would be a guest speaker, and you'd have mm -hmm. all, wow. you know, all of this kind of thing. It would yeah. be kind of a fun thing to do. So we'll chat about that later. Yeah. Um, so, Eric, so Eric, go ahead. To answer your question five years from now, Brianna, this is just the infant stage of a wonderful totally. program, baby, baby. and I'm thinking what would be a, a viable methodology to, to grow this, this program? I guess that's my question, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to work with Brianna more closely in, in developing that whole thing. If it's grant writing, if, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, I'm not a fundraiser, I never have been, yep. but I'd love to learn more about that's that's what to, this mm -hmm. business is all that. about. Right. Fundraising. Well, everybody's a fundraiser when when it becomes personal enough. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yes. Right. You know when, yeah. like I say, with this this spinal cord company, I, I I have this young lady that works for me, and we, she wants to expand as she graduates. And in order to do that, she needs to have some amount of funding. So right. we wrote a thirty thousand dollar grant for a foundation in Washington State, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, and will and she's going to try to get matching funds from her university. So oh, that's nice. that's you know th th there's lots of ways of, of sewing, uh, going about it. But okay, so you said you like to partner with a lot of different types of entities. Mm -hmm. um, YMCA of the USA mm -hmm. to me comes to mind. I actually wrote mm -hmm. it down here because I've done some work with my old cancer program, and the YMCA of the USA actually sponsors the Livestrong program that used oh. to be the Lance Armstrong Foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have a lot of cancer programs. That okay. are that are from Livestrong, but it's not just exercise. It's it's nutrition programs. It's hmm. it's guest speakers who come to the Y, and so so it, it's it's sort nice. of a total health program sponsored by this. You know, back in the day when Lance Armstrong was in, they right, raised right. a hundred and some million dollars for this wow. thing. So they had tons of money that they could chop up into doing these types of programs. So that's something that that I think. Um, hmm. So and I, one of the questions I have here that we spoke about is, do you think that that, that blind fitness will be part of this larger fitness community, like uh, yeah. the, the autism fitness, the multiple sclerosis, the cancer wellness, those kinds of things. Yep, so, I yeah. think having something like that, a stamp of, you know, this is an accessible program for the blind would be huge. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would love to expand more into the youth, pro uh, working with youth. 
Because at this point, mm -hmm. we're really focused more on adults. Um, right. What percentage of, of younger children are part of the blind community? Well, I mean, we have a big community here in Santa Barbara going to the uh, public schools, kids that are visually impaired. Um, I don't have numbers, but you know. Well, if, if it's 5% yeah. of a thousand, you've got 50 to maybe mm -hmm. 100 children that, that yeah. need to have they need to have everything it's and not that's, just fitness but there's a big need for programming mm -hmm. for those kids too mm -hmm. so um, I'd love to be a part of that as well okay um, so we've got a few minutes to go here um, I want to ask another question of you in terms of um, do you ever feel that you were maybe cheated out of something Well, that's a great question. Um, yes and no. Um, oh, I'll give you an example. Uh, in high school, um, I was in high school from 1966 to 1970, and that's right when the Up With People movement uh, went, went global. And I didn't hear about it until um, late in the game, and I didn't self-advocate enough to find out more about it because a, a, a roommate in college actually went on tour with them for a year and mm -hmm. I was just, why didn't I get to do that? Uh -huh. You know, so, mm -hmm. so that was something I did not self-advocate enough to, you know, just find out more about it. And that's what a lot of blind people in my position, I think, need to do more of is, mm -hmm. is get out there if you have if you have computer technology, search the web, you know, find stuff on YouTube, but find out more, d uh, extend oneself to find out more about what they really want to do mm -hmm. in terms of following your heart and following your, your, your passion. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, see, I see so many opportunities, so many roads that you can go down, and I think as a, as a manager of this program, you're gonna have to say, okay, well, we need to fundraise. How do we do this, this, and this? And, mm -hmm. and wanna hire some more people. What are we gonna be looking for? And do we need to move into a building or do we just need to partner with other, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you, know you have all these these spokes in the wheel that, in yep. your business. That, Tell me about it. Right, and someone <laughs> told me that about my business that they said, you know, some people have two spokes. They, Eric, you got like 12. Right. And then I imagine you probably have lots of spokes as well too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that the, from my limited um, interaction with both of you, and I appreciate you both coming tonight, is that, that there is, you know, it really is, as Bob just said, sort of this beginning stages of what could be a huge blossoming type of mm -hmm. wellness business, cooking classes and, right. you know, and, you know. Yeah, I want it to be all, all encompassing, not just this physical fitness piece. Right, I love right. that music and mm -hmm. culture and art and, Mm -hmm. traveling, um, you know, anything and everything to make more accessible to this community. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds interesting. So yeah. we got about a minute to go. How can people get a hold of you? So we have our website, blindfitness.org, and you can donate there on our website as well. We have Instagram account, um, blindfitnesssb, and Facebook as well. Blind Fitness. Awesome. And I'm not going to say how to get a hold of you, but <laughs> if they want to talk with you about something, they'll get a hold of you through, through Brianna. Yeah. So, so for Blind Fitness and our guest tonight, Bob Burnham, which was fantastic to meet you, sir. Thank and you so Brianna much. Brianna Pettit, I just, I just, this was a really, look how fast the hour went. Uh, it did, it went, wow. <laughs> we have 30 seconds yeah. to go. So this is Eric Durek. I'm the guest host tonight, and we appreciate uh, you listening in, and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. This is great. Mm-hmm.